and welcome to St. Paul's United Church of Christ here in downtown Wausau, Wisconsin. We are so pleased to have you joining us. We have just several announcements for this day. We have a couple of trips that are coming up and we'd love to have you joining us. So if you wouldn't mind, please check with the office and find out the details for those trips and, and do come along. We have a, a wonderful time. One of which is the garden tour that's coming up here in early May. And that's in honor of Mary Townsend, who Mary Ann Townsend, who used to be our secretary here. She loved flowers so much. And so we do this trip in honor of her this year. So um, once again, please call the office and find out the details and some of the wonderful events that are coming up here. Oh, and by the way, Mother's Day is coming up very soon as well. And we're gonna have a very special Mother's Day service, which will include a, a great meal afterward. So uh, watch the website, call the office, get details on that as well. In the meantime, please join with me in worship today. Our opening hymn is Come Thou Almighty King. <laughs> welcoming him for you see all are always welcome in this place together. The way is difficult. Let us help each other. The way is joyful. Let us share it with one another. The way is Christ. For Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. The way is open before us. Let us go with the love of God, with the grace of Christ, and with the communion of the Holy Spirit. Please join with me then in our opening prayer. God of resurrection, we cry out to you as empty people in a fractured world. We live in a world of Good Fridays, where the innocent suffer and die, where midday darkness smothers out the light, where hopes and dreams dissolve, and where evil seems to triumph. God of resurrection, we long to discover your presence. We long to feel the rhythm of your power. We stumble toward the tombs in our lives and long to find them empty. Bring Easter joy to our hearts. 
to our eyes, to our ears, and to our lives this morning. In the name of Christ, whose life and love could not be stamped out, whose resurrection hope is the hope which nurtures love and laughter in our lives and lures us to sprout, blossom, and bloom like spring flowers in the morning sun, we pray. Amen. I invite you to share with me, too, in passing of the peace. I always kind of tease about this, so turn whoever may be in the room with you. And I've teased a long time about if it's the cat and the dog, that's just fine. They always love a good pat in the head besides. But um, join with me in passing of the peace. A handshake, a hug, or just the peace sign is just fine. Jesus said to them, peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So may the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Now, on Sunday, and um, if you were here with me now, I would take you on a little bit of a walk. Because our gospel text is about the road to Emmaus. So we're going to make believe we're walking. And on Sunday, we really will do a walk around the church with the kids. But have you ever noticed, uh, well, first of all, walking is really good for your health. Um, I've always enjoyed going for walks. I live in a place where there's a great trail. And I used to walk it a lot. I'm not doing it quite so much. But hopefully with spring and summer here, we'll go back to walking along the riverbank. It's, it's beautiful. But did you also notice that as you're enjoying the walk, I mean, not only is it good for your health, but it's good for your mental health as well. It gives you an opportunity to, to, to really be open to nature and, and what's going on around you. It gives you some time to really think about some of the deep subjects of life. So as you're walking along, again, I'm just making believe I'm walking, I'm going to encourage you, as spring is now here, to get out there. Enjoy spring for what it is and summer. Go for a walk. Have those good conversations, maybe even just with yourself. Because through walking, it gives you lots of time to reflect. So be with me for just a moment. Wondrous God, through our time with you, being standing still or sitting down or going for that walk, may we open our hearts, our minds, and our ears to your still speaking presence. Amen. And uh, with that then, I invite you to hear our scripture lessons for this day. The first one today is from 1 Peter. It is 1 Peter 1. I'm going to start out with verse 17. For it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as the Father, the one who judges all people impartially, according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed, from the fertile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish. He was destined to be before you, the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake, through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and your hope may be set on God. The gospel reading for this day um, does come from Luke. It is Luke 24. It is just a little bit lengthy. You have seen pictures throughout the years of two people walking on the road to Emmaus and of course someone who we now know as Jesus follows them 
So I begin with uh, verse 13. Now on the same day, two of the other disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, which is about seven miles from Jerusalem. And talking with each other about all these things that happened, while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came and neared them and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And they said to him, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? Well, they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and the people, and how our chief priest and leaders handing them over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and, and besides all this, it is now the third day since all these things took place. Moreover, some of the women in the group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and they did not find his body. They came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just like the women said. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish are you, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. And this ends our lessons for this day then. Thanks be to God. Please hear our special music. Come, risen Lord. decided to set aside a very special day to honor some of his best subjects. When the big day arrived, there was a large gathering in the palace courtyard, and four finalists were brought before them and the king. And the king then was to select the winner. And the winner would get a great prize. Well, the first person presented was a wealthy philanthropist. The king was told that this man was highly deserving of this honor because of the many humanitarian efforts that he had made. He'd given much of his wealth and time to the poor. The second person was a celebrated and much loved physician. The king was told that this doctor was highly deserving of the honor because he had rendered faithful and dedicated service to the sick throughout the country for many years. The third person was a distinguished judge. The king was told that the judge was worthy because he was noted for his wisdom and his fairness and his brilliant decisions. The fourth person presented was an old woman. Everyone was really surprised to see her there because her manner was very humble. So was her dress. She didn't look the part of someone 
who would be honored as the greatest subject in the kingdom. I mean, what chance could she possibly have? When compared at least to those other three. Who had all accomplished so much? Even though, there she was. There was something about her though, in her eyes, it was the look of, of love and understanding, of, of, of quiet confidence. Well, the king is intrigued and a bit puzzled at the same time. He asked who she was. The answer came, you see the philanthropist? You see that doctor? You see that judge? Well, she was their teacher. That woman had no wealth, no fortune, no title, but she had unselfishly given her life to produce some of the greatest people of the kingdom. There is nothing more powerful or more Christ-like than sacrificial love giving your heart, giving your all. The king could not see the value in this humble lady. He missed the significance of the teacher. Often we miss the value of those around us too. I think it would surprise us to know how often we miss the presence of Christ just like those two who were walking on that road to Emmaus missed the significance of that stranger on the road with him. It is likewise easy for us to miss the significance of Easter, of the resurrection itself. It was that way at least for those on the road to Emmaus. Don't miss the significance of the resurrection. You see, Easter should transform us. Look closely at what happens to these two as they journey to Jerusalem. And by the way, some places suggest the two walking were disciples of course but not the original 12. Some suggest they were brothers, some suggest that Cleophas was walking with his wife so that's not really clear. But we do know that Emmaus is about seven miles away though from Jerusalem and we know that they're walking and they're heading back to their home. We do know that a stranger who we now know as Jesus, joins them. And he asks them what they're talking about, and they stop dead in their tracks. They can hardly bring themselves to discuss, because it was such a, a sad event. Those last three days, their friend, their master, their rabbi, the one they described as a mighty prophet, had been unjustly condemned to death and violently killed on that cross. They say to their companion, are you the only person in all of Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place? This would be enough to unsettle anyone, but new and disturbing information was being told. Reports about this tomb being empty and the crazy notion of some who said that he was alive. Listen then to what happens next on that dusty road at the end of the day. This is the part that intrigues me, I think, the most. Jesus begins to interpret the Old Testament and explains to them how all these things were spoken of by Moses. And by the prophets. He literally opens the scriptures up to them. He transforms their thinking. 
they have no idea that all these things were to take place. They concluded that Jesus' mission had failed. They now understand that the last three days was the plan all along. Finally, finally, Cleophas and his brother, or perhaps his wife, again, we're not clear on who it is, invite Jesus into their home. And he has dinner with them. And again, Jesus transforms the event. After a very ordinary dinner, at the end of a difficult day, this stranger takes bread and breaks it and blesses it and gives it to them and their eyes and their ears and their souls are open and at that very moment they are transformed. Don't miss the significance of this transformation. And secondly, and even maybe more importantly, they become convicted. Verse 32 speaks about that. When they, they realize that this is the risen Lord who is with them, and now he vanishes. And they turn to each other. Can you imagine this? They turn to each other and they say, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening up the scriptures to us? Isn't that true, though, in life? We usually don't understand what is happening to us until it's too late. Until we open our eyes, until we understand the change, till we have that aha moment, until we look back and we see the convictions of our hearts. You know, one of the greatest voices of the church is St. Augustine. He lived between the 4th and the 5th centuries in Rome, and he was a bishop there. After Rome fell and faded into dust, it was largely Augustine's writing that kept Christianity alive and made it the most influential movement that the world has ever seen or ever known ever since. It's remarkable, though, that between the 8th and 12th centuries, his writings were even more widely read than any other time. Now that's 400 plus years after his death. But he wasn't always a saint. Before he was converted at age 29, he lived his life to the fullest. As a matter of fact, he put off being baptized to the very last second just so he could have a little more fun and sin more. But Augustine had one great quality that saved his life. He had a praying mother. And she never, ever gave up on him. And one day, he stopped long enough to listen. And he heard God's still speaking voice. But here's the thing. Convictions do not always leave to conversations. But transformation cannot happen unless we're first convicted. So, to put this plainly, you simply need to believe in something. No one can go through life just sitting on the fence. Every once in a while, you simply need to stand for something, believe in something. Now, you might not even recognize your convictions at first. So, on your own personal road, 
walking to Emmaus, don't miss the significance of Easter and the resurrection. It convicts us. It changes us. It makes our heart be a completely different heart than we had before. And that conviction can change not only you, but then you can get out there and change the whole world around us. The resurrection makes us witnesses too. And this is perhaps the area that most people fail. You are certainly not alone if you have never spoken to another person about the death, the resurrection, the grace, the forgiveness, or spending eternal life with Jesus Christ. You see, very few people do. For some odd reason, we can talk about anything and everything under the sun. We talk about money, we talk about sex, we talk about politics. Why in the world is it so hard to talk about Jesus? You can measure the numbers, but you cannot measure the effect that you could have upon someone's life and upon the world if they would just listen to God's still speaking voice. In your head, in the back of your head, try to calculate the number of homes kept intact, the marriages saved, the children given spiritual training, the young saved from drugs or alcohol, the thousands of other influences that you could have, the significance of one life cannot be calculated. Even more, there is no lab, there is no library that can account for the impact that the resurrection, that Easter has had upon human history. You take the resurrection out of the gospel and out of the house of cards of Christianity and it would fall to the ground. Paul recognized this when he wrote to the Corinthians some were saying that the resurrection never happened. Paul made it crystal clear. He said, if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is in vain and the gospel is nothing but a charade. St. Paul's United Church of Christ, let me proclaim to you today that this day, that Christ has indeed risen from the dead. At the end of this story, the two who are walking do what's only natural. They get up, they walk back to Jerusalem, and they tell the other disciples exactly what they've seen. Now, that is the beginning of being a witness, of telling your friends exactly what you've seen. We can all remember television shows with Billy Graham talk to millions at a time. You don't need to be a Billy Graham. You can just get out there and tell that one person who will tell another person who will tell another person and you simply need to tell what you have seen. The resurrection is significant enough to do the rest of the work for you. It was the power behind the witness of the disciples. It was the power behind the witness of these two who are walking on the road to Emmaus. It was the power of Paul who brought the gospel to Rome. It was the power of Augustine. And now, it's the power of you as well. So, on your road home, don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss the power of the resurrection to convict, to transform, and to open someone else's 
eyes and ears to that still speaking voice. Amen. Please join with me then with our offering today. Through your offering here at St. Paul's, we are able to continue with our media ministry, which we are very grateful for. And we will tell you, we do get watched, I get watched often, and we do amazing things within the city of Wassa and beyond. So from the bottom of our hearts, we do say thank you. But we do encourage you to continue to gift as well. So be with me for a moment of prayer. Wondrous God, in our witnessing of the events of Easter, in the joy of the resurrection, may we be moved, may our hearts be moved, may our pocketbooks be moved, and may we be generous givers so we can help to spread that good news. Amen. I invite you then to hear our offering music today. It's called Lord you gave the great commandment. shared for the benefit of all, so might our offerings of money, time, and giftedness be a breaking open of abundant love for our world. Amen. Please join with me then in the doxology. <laughs> God, we know much is expected from us as your people. We ask you to meet us where we are. Empower us as individuals and as the church to find the courage to be your people. Before some of us can stand up, we need you to kneel beside us. Before others of us can speak the truth boldly, we need to hear your truth anew. Before we can offer healing to others, we need to welcome your healing in our hearts. May our lips be able to join with the psalmist and say, I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths. O Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down in the pit. What a joy it is to be among your people. Help us to be a resurrected good news community. Again, with the psalmist we say, 
You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever and ever. Now, O God, we ask that you hear our silent, but our most intimate thoughts and prayers. And now we honor you with a prayer that you taught so very long ago. So please join with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join with me then in today's closing hymn. It's on page 115 of your hymnal, or it's printed in your bulletin, because you see, there is just something about that name. find the wonder of God, and may it greet us in new and surprising ways. May your eyes be open enough to love deeply from a mutual heart. May we know this is how much God loves us. Go, go into the world with love and joy, for God's peace always goes with you. Please join with me in our sung benediction as I invite you to get out into the world and pass it on. pass it on. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. God bless. Amen. <laughs>